Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. With phase 4 around the corner in April at some point, I thought I'd give you a rundown of what is new in the patch, as there's actually quite a bit that will be coming out. Zorgorub is sort of like a catch-up patch for Classic, both with new loot from the raid, which is very accessible, as well as with all the new crafted gear. This is the real time we can get some endgame level gear, without having to run the 40-man raids all the time. Remember ZG is 20-man after all, and has a 3-day lockout. So believe me, there will be a massive amount of pugs forming to clear this place very regularly. So if you've capped fairly recently or are looking to get into raiding, there's never really been a better time than with the release of Phase 4. So let's get into it. Before we talk ZG though, it's just worth a quick mention about the Green Dragons. Now, honestly, I'm not going to dwell on them too long because the chances are only a few guilds on your server regularly track and go after the world bosses. And since their respawns are variable as well as being, well, in the open world, it makes timing and organizing people on the fly pretty difficult. Now, if Green Dragons follow the 1.11 iteration, they should all spawn at the same time in their respective locations, being in Ashenvale, Feralus, the Hinterlands, and Duskwood. These dragons also share certain items as loot, as well as some of their abilities, so if your guild is aiming to go and do them, make sure you bring along some greater nature resist potions, as all of them do some form of nature damage. Oh, and by the way, they are immune to nature damage as well, so elemental shamans, looks like you're going to be roleplaying in hands. So with that said, let's talk Zorgorub. Now, there are some new crafting rewards which you can earn at different reputation values that I'm going to quickly go over on screen here. Those being for blacksmithing for mail and plate gear, engineering and tailoring for cloth gear, leather working for leather, as well as alchemy for several new potions. Note that these items just need the reputation to learn their recipes. You don't need any specific rep to wear any of the items that are currently being shown. The one weird exception is with the Bloodvine 3 set from tailoring that does need 300 tailoring to get that plus 2% crit, so if you are planning on donning the 3 set for the foreseeable future, it's probably worth stocking the materials now for leveling tailoring, rather than when prices go up as the patch drops. In terms of actually earning the reputation, it's pretty simple stuff, just run ZG. Trash and boss kills and rep, there are a bunch of quests on the island itself that you can pick up that are all simple objectives within ZG. The quests concerning the coins are just random drops inside the instance as well and are handed in for rep. There are also blue items called bijous which can be destroyed at the altar of Zanza, which is just nearby on the island here. And when you do this you also get a token that rewards further reputation. You may want to hang on to a few of these tokens as they're needed for certain items as we're going to check out a bit later. Now onto the class specific items. So this whole system can be a little bit confusing to get your head around so I'll explain how it works and then show you everything for your class. I'll start by talking about the Edge of Madness inside ZG and the bosses there. These are spawned using a Gurubashi Mojo Madness made at 300 alchemy. The recipe itself is learned from this tablet just behind the fire here. This spawns one of four bosses each of who drop a specific item item linked to their name, and they are on a spawn rotation, it's not random. Once you have all four items, you can either combine it with a punctured voodoo doll associated with your class to create your class trinket, and this can be done in neutral with the Zandalar tribe, I'll show the trinkets in a moment. The dolls are also needed for your class specific enchants in combination with a primal Hakari idol, which are dropped by Jindo the Hexer and Bloodlord Mandakir. These enchants are handed in at Zanza the Restless within ZG at friendly or higher reputation with the Zandalar tribe. Also, you can turn in Arcanums from Diamol that are already in the game here in exchange for a Savage Guard at Honored. You get the punctured dolls from jinxed hoodoo piles that are scattered around the instance. These piles can also contain a blood scythe. This is required to give you a chance to obtain Bloodvine from herbing within ZG. Also, any mining inside ZG has the chance to give you solderite. Both of these items are required for ZG rep specific items that we looked at earlier. Now, do you remember those honor tokens we just touched on a little bit ago? One of these can be handed in at Revered in exchange for a buff item, which can be seen here. The spirit one's pretty great. 50 spirit and stamina is a massive amount. Secondly, the honor tokens are needed for the shoulder enchants at Exalted, 15 of them, either giving 30 attack power, 18 spell power, or plus 30 free healing. This will be the best enchant you can get to lay to Nax Ramus, so save up those tokens when you're approaching Exalted. On top of this, there is the Heart of Hakar. This works just like Anixia or Nefarian's Head, 100% drop chance from Hakar. One person can loot it and can hand it in for a trinket and a zone wide buff. And we have had confirmation from the PTR testing that the world buff from handing this in is zone wide, which is called the Spirit of Zandalar and is 10% speed and 15% stats for two hours. 
nice addition to your world buff shopping list there. With that out of the way, we also have the class specific items that are handed in back at your Jamba Isle. That's the place where all the rep vendors are by the way. And these give you your tier items. So in order to trade these in, you need a specific reputation value. There are three items per slot that can be handed in. For example, say you're a priest. At Friendly, you can hand in a Primal Hikari Stanchion for your tier braces, a Honored a Primal Hikari Sash for a tier belt, and a Primal Hikari Aegis at Revered for your tier chest. Different classes hand in different items, but you share your tier tokens with two other classes. However, not every class has tier in the same slots. Some have a chest and some have shoulders. I hope this is sort of making sense so far. And no, it's also not sorted by armor set like cloth and leather, etc. It's just three random classes. So for example, warrior, rogue, and priest all share tier tokens. So it sounds a bit confusing, but generally speaking, you should just be able to look at the tooltip and then find out which slot it's for from there. Now, say you have three of those tier pieces as well as your class trinket. So that's the four set done. The final bit is the necklace, which is easier and thankfully not as confusing as the other bits to get hold of. Your class will have an associated NPC around the aisle as shown here. This is where you would hand in your tier tokens as well, by the way. I like how they call paladins heathens as well. At Friendly, they will give you a net and each new reputation value above that, they will give you an upgrade for free all the way to Epic at Exalted and the Epic is required for the five set. So hopefully all of that made sense. I'm gonna go onto the class stuff and show everything on screen now. And you'll notice both the trinket and the neck have some kind of special effect on them and that the enchants are pretty amazing for everyone. So let's start off with the cloth gear. The priest items are healing focused, who would have thought? The two set with the neck and trinket are pretty solid seeing as it activates that plus 22 healing bonus. The trinket for the priest is very nice, great for short high damage fights like Broodlord or Veilstraz, where you can just spam the main tank like crazy. The three and the five set look like some disciplined DPS additions, and of course the enchant is incredibly powerful. Warlock, nothing too crazy here, the chest is decent with some hit and a ton of stamina on it, combined with the trinket for the 10% extra crits for destruction, sounds not too bad as well, especially as it activates the spell damage two set. The enchant being plus 18 spell damage and some more stamina is a pretty nice addition for us. Mage. The set overall is okay, good for farming since it has quite a lot of intellect and just raw stats on it. The trinket looks very interesting for AoE farming with Arcane Explosion and I can't wait to see some Chromagus logs with Arcane Weakness on top of this trinket. You should be able to put out some pretty crazy numbers. The enchant is exceptionally good since it gives hit on top of spell power. Mages, as per usual, getting some great gear options. As for Rogue, the chest looks pretty nice. A high amount of attack power and 2% crit. Very good. The trinket also is very desirable, especially for PvPers as a mini reusable Thistle T. The two set also granting a further 20 attack power. Definitely a bit more of a PvP oriented set overall in my opinion, especially with the enchant giving some extra dodge instead of just raw offensive stats. Druid next. It feels like Blizzard started off making a Moonkin set and then thought, nah, you know what Druid players want? They want more healing gear. The neck is actually interesting, but lacks spell power, which is a shame. It also has strength for some reason. Must be for all those Hand of Rag Moonkins I keep hearing about. The five set would be great if it wasn't the five set, but the two set instead. The trinket though is very good, just the same as the priest one. Makes you a very effective tank healer for its duration. Your enchant is also very powerful, just giving all around good stats that you want. The Hunter has solid itemization overall. The neck is pretty cool for PvP. Fain Death is just so useful overall. The Trinket should also be very nice on short duration fights as a possible swap out with Fain Death mid combat so you can put out a large amount of burst. The Enchant is one of the best ones giving ranged attack power, hit, and stamina, which is incredible. The Shaman set is pretty solid, I would say. Not too useful ability-wise on the jewelry. The trinket would be very nice for jewels, however. All the pieces do have spell power on though, not just healing, so it's a nice addition for elemental, and all of your set bonuses come in handy. The enchant is more intellect and spell power. Nice to see a hybrid class get more than just healing gear for once. Speaking of hybrid classes and healing, Paladin gets a healing set, of course they do. The trinket is nice, Paladin scale exceptionally well with anything that gives crit for heals to go along with the illumination talent. The neck is quite nice for PvP, good stats and more stun duration on Hammer of Justice is very welcome. The set bonuses are pretty meh overall. The enchant is very nice for healing and even has a bit of defense on it. 
Finally, Warrior. Decent set, bit of a mix between offense and defense, as if it was designed with off tanking specifically in mind. The trinket is nice pre pull for rage, and the neck reduces the cost of hamstring further and goes well with the PvP gloves, reducing the cost of hamstring by 5 overall with both equipped. Good for spamming it for root fishing or for sword spec procs. The enchant is very tank focused as you can see. So that's everything new with ZG. I hope it gives you a nice idea of what you're getting and whether it's something you wish to aim for. Actually, there's one more thing with ZG, or two should I say, the Swift Zulian Tiger from High Priest Thekel and the Swift Rizashi Raptor from Bloodlord Bandakir, both at super rare drop rates. And best of luck to all on the slash rolls. These mounts are still rare and exclusive in the live game today. Also, I believe you can skip Epic Riding if you get one of these as a drop, if I remember correctly. And just to finish up, there are two more things which are showing for some reason as releasing in Phase 4 on Atlas Loot and Wowhead. However, as far as I am aware, they will not be until Phase 5. It's just some things I came over whilst doing research to make sure I'm not really missing anything out. I also went and checked on the PTR and did not find these things being active in the game. Those being the Handing Quest from Hermit or Talon Silifus for the Dark Rune Plate and Rune Stygian Schematics for Shadow Resist Gear and the quest for the recipe for smoked sandworm dumplings, also leading from a quest in Silithus. Just thought I'd give it a mention in case anyone else has seen it and was wondering the same thing I was. As far as I know, both of these should be available in Phase 5, which would make the most sense as they're both either to do with Scenarian Circle Rep or give you rewards associated to it. So that'll do for my Phase 4 content rundown. Hope I didn't miss anything off. I didn't go into granular detail on some matters because they're intuitive enough to be honest, but it should give you a good idea of what's to come for your class and what you have to look forwards to. Let me know if there was anything else that was missing. Seems like a small patch, but it's pretty packed in terms of content. As always, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.